It's James from the Fit RV. I'm pretty excited today because the weather is nice and Steph said I could go outside and play with my poop tank. Um, it's a black tank simulator. They said I was mad. They said it couldn't be done, but I did it. I built a black tank simulator. Why in the heck would I do that? Well, I'll tell you. Um, the standard RV advice is to not empty your tanks until they're three quarters full. And the reason for that is so that you get a good rush of fluid and it carries all the stuff out of your tanks. And that's always made sense to me. That's always been what I've done. At the same time, there are a number of people that use uh, other products like a macerator pump or something called the sewer solution that empty through a one inch hose. Now, you don't have to have been at the head of your class in fluid mechanics to realize that this is gonna empty a tank a heck of a lot quicker than this. So it seems that the sewer solution or macerator pump is sort of at odds with the traditional RV advice. So I just had to know what was going on in the tank. That's why I built the black tank simulator. Now, I could have tried to use something like, like this to see in the black tank while it was emptying. This is a little remote probe camera I've got. But uh, I just couldn't bring myself to put it in the black tank, especially while it was full because, you know, it's mine. So I built the black tank simulator, and today we are going to use it to test the sewer solution from Volterra. So some particulars on the black tank simulator. It's, a, it's basically a box. It's made out of quarter-inch acrylic that I've solvent welded together. Um, it was my first time actually solvent welding anything, so I'm pretty pleased it actually worked. Um, I've also got a standard 3-inch ABS pipe for the outlet like we've all seen on our RVs. At the end of this, I have an attachment for a standard RV blade valve, which attaches, basically it's a twist on, so it just attaches like that. Okay, now, the tank is 23 and a half inches long by 17 inches wide by 11 and a half inches deep. There's about uh, 231 cubic inches in a gallon, and this is just under 4,600, so it's like 19.9 gallons. The outlet tube is three inches in diameter, and it's uh, 12 and a half inches long, so that's like another 0.4 gallons, all of which is a very uh, long, drawn out way of me saying this is about a 20 gallon tank. So that's what we're gonna be working with. Um, couple other notes on the tank. A real RV black tank doesn't have right angle corners. Um, the only place that this is really gonna matter for this experiment is right over here towards the outlet. So to compensate for this, I've uh, put an enormous glob of silicone on this part of the tank and sort of formed it into a ramp, and that'll help guide things towards the outlet. Um, the other thing to note about the, uh, the RV black tank is a real RV black tank is sort of sloped towards the outlet. Now, I actually went out and measured the slope of our RV black tank and found out that it was about four degrees. So you take four degrees, the sine of that times 23 and a half inches, all of which is a way of using trigonometry to say that basically I need to do that. This is gonna give me about a four degree slope, which is the same as what I've got out in the RV, and that's how we're gonna test the black tank. So having a black tank simulator is great and all, but I've gotta have something to put in it. Um, and believe it or not, I first actually called the laboratory at the local wastewater treatment facility, and I don't know what I was hoping, that they'd have some sort of standard poo in a bag, but they don't. Um, their only advice to me was to keep it to less than 6% solids. So beyond that, I was on my own. Uh, without getting too graphic, I wanted to come up with something to simulate what was in the black tank, and so I reasoned it was made out of the following kinds of stuff. Um, first, a lot of water. Uh, next is going to be stuff that floats. Um, and then some stuff that doesn't float. And then some stuff that's broken up. And some toilet paper. So I made a standard solution out of mostly household food products that I'm going to use for each of the runs that you're about to see. Here's what's in it. There's uh, one cup of peanut butter, one cup of shortening, four cups of cornmeal, and then I mix that up with some food coloring, divide it in half, half of that will sink. To the other half, I add two cups of Rice Krispies and that half will float. I've put an unnatural pink food coloring in there. And then to the tank itself, I'm gonna add a can of mixed vegetables and one cup of instant mashed potato flakes. Um, I'm also going to add 40 sheets of RV toilet tissue that I cut into half inch strips. And then to help break things up, I went at it with a paint mixer for 30 seconds on low speed and 30 seconds on high. Okay, so here we are. 
I'm not sure what the inside of the black tank really looks like, but this is pretty gross, so we're just going to go with it. Um, we've got the standard mixture stuff in the tank. We've got the tank sloped towards the outlet. I've got the sewer hose connected to my clean out here at the house. And we're going to time it. And so here, here goes nothing. And fire in the hole. Yeah. And she's off. The funny thing is, it smells like peanut butter. <laughs> and now we've just slowed down to a trickle, so let's take a look and see what's in the tank. So, altogether, that took about a minute, and here's what we've got in the tank. As you can see, all the big stuff made it out, and especially the stuff that was floating, but there's just this sludge that remains in the bottom of the tank. Um, a little bit more towards the top. I expected to see a lot of stuff down here in this area, but there's really not a lot there. It's mostly left high and dry back over here. So now I'm just going to clean it out and then we'll try it again with the sewer solution. So I've refilled the tank with the standard mixture of disgusting stuff and uh, I'm ready to test the sewer solution. Now the sewer solution uses a high pressure jet of water and it turns down like that to sort of break up the waste and pump it through a flexible one inch hose. Now, according to Volterra, you can actually use this to pump up to 100 feet using PVC pipe or up three feet vertically. And you really couldn't do that with a three inch hose, but I'm not gonna test those today. What we're really interested in is how much residue this is gonna leave in the tank. Um, now, they do say that in order to pump uphill or long distances, you need to have water pressure of at least 25 PSI. I'm not gonna test those, but I still wanna make sure I've got adequate water pressure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up my Watts water pressure meter and see what kind of pressure we've got. <laughs> well, according to this, we've got about 118 PSI, which should be more than adequate to get the job done. And that's at the end of a 75 foot hose. So we're gonna go ahead and test. Got the uh, backflow preventer hooked up. This hose is always leaked. Got that hooked into the uh, sewer solution. Got the nozzle pointed down. And we're going to turn it on so we get some water flowing. There we go. Now, I don't know if you can see, there's a jet of water that's running down the hose. So with that, here we go. Oh, I need to be, be ready to time it. Go. Now the end here is where you're going to see stuff happening. You can see stuff getting sucked into the sewer solution and pumped down. Although rather obviously, it's not uh, emptying as quickly as a standard 3-inch hose. So we're about 40 seconds into this, and it's maybe a third of the way done. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff still up top. I'm, I'm wondering how that's going to get in there. Maybe through the side. Okay, so it's been about two and a half minutes, and we're going to call that good for now. So let's have a look. There's uh, quite a bit more residue in the tank, and some things that were floating in the tank before didn't quite make it out. Right, I expected to see a lot more stuff up in this area again, but there's really not. Um, there's quite a bit more residue left in the tank than there was with the three-inch hose. Although, there's not much sticking to the sides of the tank, which I might have expected. Okay, so we've got a little bit more stuff left in the tank, especially the larger floating stuff with the sewer solution than we did with the three-inch hose. But, 
the, there's a, an extra step you can do with the sewer solution to actually flush out your tank, and I'm going to show that next. But first, if you're in front of me in line at the dump station, don't do this because I'm going to get really annoyed with you and it's going to take a while and I won't be the only one getting annoyed with you. Um, but you can flush the tank with the sewer solution. I'm going to do that. They do plainly admit that the effectiveness of the tank flushing is going to depend on your plumbing configuration. And right here we've got pretty much the ideal setup for that. It's just a straight shot right back into the tank. So I'm going to basically just turn the nozzle here so that it's pointing back up the tank. Turn the water back on. And I'm going to time how long it takes to fill this 20 gallon tank. And... Go! Whoa! <laughs> Alright, well that's, that's pretty effective. Yikes. So, yeah, after getting doused with fake pink sewage, I'm, I'm going to put a lid on it. Kind of like that. Now we're going to flush the tank. And go. As you can see, that's doing a pretty good job of flushing out the tank. Now one thing you're going to want to keep in mind is when you're using this to flush your tank is you're going to want to have someone inside monitoring your tank levels to make sure you don't overfill the tank. If your plumbing configuration was a little different than what we've got here, it might be that the water got in a lot faster than it got out and you might wind up overfilling the tank. They warn against this in the instructions, so just something to keep an eye on. We're going to let this go another couple minutes and then flush again. Right, that's about five minutes of flushing, so now we're going to go and uh, set it back to dump. All right, so I'm going to call that done. So let's have a look. We've got, actually, when all is said and done, we've got quite a bit less stuff in the tank than we did with the, uh, with the standard dump hose. Um, that wasn't the case when we just dumped it, but by the time we ran a flush, it's quite a bit cleaner. So it's the next day. I've had a chance to think about it, to look over some of the footage, and to draw some conclusions about what we saw. And the first conclusion I drew is, holy cow, is my water pressure really 120 PSI? I didn't believe it. Um, so I went and took the same water pressure meter and at the same time of day, retested it. And it came out again to 120 PSI. So then I still didn't believe it. I took another water pressure meter that was actually hooked up to our pressure regulator and hooked it up as well, and they moved in tandem. So yes, I really do have 120 PSI worth of water pressure, and my next call, as soon as I'm done here, is to a plumber. Uh, so, conclusions on the sewer solution. I guess the first one is, as expected, it takes longer to empty the tank with the sewer solution than it does with a standard 3-inch hose. It took one minute thereabouts with the three inch hose. With the sewer solution, it took two and a half minutes. That's not unusual, it's a smaller hose. I think we'd all expect that. Now I wanna show you some pictures of what the inside of the tank looked like. And the first one we're gonna look at is this one here, where I've emptied the tank with the three inch hose. So what you can see is that a lot of the material that sank to the bottom of the tank tended to get left behind. The floating material got sucked right out of there. So the next picture I'm gonna show you is one of the bottom of the tank after using the sewer solution, but just dumping. And there's maybe the same amount of tank sludge left in the bottom, but you can also see that some of the stuff that was floating got left behind, didn't get sucked out. And then the next picture I'm going to show you is a picture of the bottom of the tank after using the sewer solution and flushing. And obviously here, there's no comparison at all. This is far and away much cleaner than any of the other pictures. So. We've got that. Um, something else that I found out that I didn't expect had to do with the sides of the tank. And I'm gonna show you some pictures so you'll see what I mean. So this first picture is one of the sides of the tank after dumping with the three inch hose. And you can see I've got this greasy pink film slime all over the sides of the tank. Now I'm gonna show you a picture of after just dumping, not flushing, but just dumping with the sewer solution. And the sides of the tank here are actually much, much cleaner. 
This is the opposite of what I expected. I really expected there would be stuff left sticking to the sides of the tank when using the sewer solution, and that didn't happen at all. Um, so you can draw your own conclusions, you know, based on what you saw, but here's sort of the bottom line for me. Um, we move frequently, we boondock a lot without hookups, you know, and I tend to find myself sort of dumping and running at, at public dump stations. And in those situations, I really can't see myself using the sewer solution very much because you need a solid source of water and you need the time in order to dump it and then to flush out the tanks to get really the kind of result you're going to want. So maybe while we're on the road, I'm really not seeing us using the sewer solution very much. But if you're the kind of RVer who finds yourself at, you know, full service hookups and you've got the time and the water pressure and exclusive use of a sewer connection to yourself, Absolutely, by all means, go for it. Use the sewer solution. You're going to get a fabulous rinse and clean out of that tank. Um, and I guess the third thing is, even though I don't see us using the sewer solution on the road, because we have a class B, right? So I can't take two different ways to dump the tank. But I ac absolutely do see us using the sewer solution once we get home and I've got my insanely high 120 PSI worth of water pressure and my sewer clean out to use to dump the tank. I'm going to get it fabulously clean, and I'm going to know that the RV is ready to go the next time we head out on an adventure. So that's sort of it for, uh, for now. If you've got any questions or comments on what you saw, please leave them on our website, and I'm going to put a link at the end of the video so you can get there, um, and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, the other thing is if I really want these experiments to get better over time, so if you've got suggestions on how I can improve them, please leave me those too. I'm all ears. And I guess the last thing is, if you've got something you want to see me test in the Black Tank Simulator, let me know that too, because I've got plenty of peanut butter and cornmeal left. That's all for now. Bye. Look, Ma, I'm making poop on the internet. You always knew I'd do good. <laughs>